Okay, good evening, everyone. I'm going to call the Marion Township's Board of Supervisors meeting for September 2022 to order. Time is now 7.05 p.m. Our first item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. Everyone, please rise. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, in this world, with liberty and justice for all. For anyone who is interested, there are masks and hand sanitizer in the front of the room. Uh, if you plan on making a public comment, uh, please be advised that the meetings are recorded, both from an audio and video standpoint. And when making your comments, to please come to the front of the room and speak clearly towards the microphone. Um, first item that we're going to do before we open the floor for public comments is the approval of the minutes for the August 20th, 2022 workshop meeting. I'll motion to approve. Second. Roll call. Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next item is the approval of the minutes for the August 25th Board of Supervisors meeting. I'll motion to approve. Second. Roll call. Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. And the next is the approval of the minutes for the September 24th workshop meeting. I'll motion to approve. Second. Second to Irene. Peter, uh, roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, next I'll turn it over to Irene for the treasurer's report. So we apologize that we don't have a copy of the budget up here. Um, nothing really terrible to report. I, for the most part, I think we're on target. Before you dive too yep. far into it, did we get the second ARP payment in yet? We did receive the second ARP payment, uh, but as because of we received the bank statements at the end of the month, that's when the the, the accounts get balanced. But yes, yeah. okay. it was a little over one hundred one thousand dollars. Very nice. So yes, we did. Thank nice. you. Um, we could expect some increases in costs over the next uh, year. Uh, roughly accounting by contract, they go up. I think. 4% every year. So that number is going to go up. Uh, insurance went up this year. EMC insurance went up and our policy probably was, will be yeah. increasing as a result of adding on additional yeah, policy yeah. for the ice rink. Um, there will, obviously there's going to be an increase in uh, cost for heating and electric. We've already seen a bit of a jump this past year. So I'm expecting that to go up anywhere between three to 4%. And these are some of the items we will be discussing again at our next workshop meeting and next month's meeting as uh, concerning budget talks. I'm just kind of throwing it out there so everyone has the, it on their mind. The gas and electric we're going to have yeah. to over budget for because that's going to be extremely volatile yep. next year. Uh, we also received notice from the police department that there will be a 5% increase in their contract costs. Um, I do have a little side issue with that later on in the meeting. Um, Another item, and I think this might be just as how we are, as how do we categorize it? Last year we had a change in the chart of accounts when it came to professional services versus engineering plus. This year was broken out, so we had a larger number. We budgeted one hundred twenty thousand dollars. So far, we're at sixty-two thousand dollars in change on that particular number. So I don't know if that's something we want to reflect as far as a category. Yeah, we'll have to make sure that when we do the the budget forecast for twenty twenty three that we have both code of accounts yeah. forecast correctly. So it's just anticipating some uh, increased costs by contract and increased costs as a result of what we're experiencing right now. Um, and that's really it as far as the budget review. Other than that, we're fairly close to target and overall numbers. Good. So, and that's all that I have for right now. Okay, very good. Thank you, Irene. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the bills for September 2022. Second. Roll call. Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. We actually we have a couple people that hit the lobby. We have uh, Travis and Brandon Sweeney on, on the Okay. At this time, I'll open up the floor to public comments. Uh, if you haven't already done so, please be sure to sign in. 
You see who's first on the list. Um, looks like uh, Jesse Hafer. You're good? Okay. Um, I can't read it because it's cursive. Uh, 55 Main Street. Is that Al? Yeah, it's Al. Okay. Yeah, cursive upside down. Not so great. Um, Al, please. Albert Ferrandino, 55 Main Street. Now we're supposed to get out of rain, and we still didn't get that gutter. I have a line out to the engineer. They're going to be giving me a design on what has to be cut there. The, the conversation is in progress. On the road. On, on the road there. All you, all you got to do is put the dirt back on the bank. It's, we don't need no engineer to spend all that money for, for so five minutes it, of work. It includes the pipe, too, that needs to go in there. Yeah. What pipe? There's the, the pipe. Many, many, many years ago, there was the money that Manget Dentistry had given us about rehabbing that pipe You're there. You're talking about from the corner? Yes. Well, from the corner down to, to Kepley, yeah. there's a pipe in there, and it's wide open. Yeah. So why do you want to put a new one in there? Well, it's We need to look at it, but the request is out there. Butch, if because we're going to get hit with a hurricane. If there's anything that you can do, I don't know if we need to take the grater out or water, just get some topsoil. If there's anything that you need to do to try to mitigate that. But Al, I don't think just putting a little dirt there is, is going to do it. That's It's a little more complex. I'm not talking about the corner now. I'm talking about from when you turn in. Yeah, I know. And I push that dirt back up so the water has a way to go down the drain. Yeah, I, 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 of, I get you. I get you. Yeah, instead but, of coming across and coming in everybody's yard and flood everybody out. Yeah. It's been I, six years now or more. Yeah. I, I, I understand. I mean, I, I'm begging. I, I, How much do I have to pay? <laughs> you, you, don't, you don't have nothing, to pay anything, Al. It's part, part of yeah. what you pay in your taxes. But um, we can try throwing some tactical things at it, I'll say. But <laughs> I need to get that design from the engineer because if there is something we have to change um, that's a little more involved, we then have to be able to, to do it the right way. And I, and I don't want to, pardon the term here, but I don't want to half-ass it for you when we actually go to fix this. <clears throat> the engineer, if he's smart enough, he's going to tell you the same thing what I'm telling you. Put the dirt back over the bank, and when the rains will just follow through the gutter. Well, with any luck, Al, and I think if it was that simple, I, I would have gotten it already because he's had like four weeks uh, since I asked. But if it is that simple, I'll be relieved because that's a really inexpensive solution. How about if I get it done and then I send you guys the bill? That doesn't work that way. <laughs> it gets done. It gets done, but it doesn't work that way. So... It, I mean, I'm, I'm begging every month and you're not to start again and nothing's been touched. Well, it's, it'll, it'll realistically this upcoming month, as soon as we have that engineering report in hand, I can turn Butch loose with what we have to do with it. Cause we have the backhoe, we have the grader, we have everything we need. I just need to know what to do. Yeah. I just told you. Well, I, I, and I appreciate the input, Al. But... <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Okay, who's, uh, who's next you on this? You asked McCarthy to do that four weeks ago. It was, it's not done. It was right after the meeting, so I just haven't, I haven't gotten it yet. I'll touch base with them. Could have been a, a scheduling thing. They may not have had somebody to be able to go out for like a week and a half, two weeks or something. I, I honestly don't know. Yeah. But I noticed that's on the agenda tonight about a new engineer. So. Yeah. yeah. So uh, who's, uh, Joe. who's who's next? Yeah. Joe. Uh, and uh, Kim. Well, they're on the agenda. Yeah. Okay, so you're good. Um, Tom Unger? Okay, very good. Uh, and Loretta, you were on here, but you scratched your name out. Are you okay? Okay, awesome. Okay, okay. and that points. Um, check and see if anybody said anything, comments on the Zoom. No. So at this time, we'll move out of public comments and the main items for discussion. First item is the Dutch Valley LERTA or LERTA request. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I left this uh, copy of what I'm just going to read through and I'll go quickly. You've got a long agenda here, um, but I left this with you. So if there's any questions, you can refer to it. And we're here tonight to discuss our request for a designation under the Local Economic Revitalization Tax Assistant Act, known as LERDA, for the properties of Dutch Valley Foods as identified on the enclosed map. I included a map with that. Alerted designation for the properties will afford the taxing authorities, which includes Berks County, the Township, and Conrad Weiser School District, the opportunity to incentivize economic development through a partial exemption of real estate taxes on new construction on these properties. Alerted designation will not result in any reduction of current real estate taxes collected by the Township on our property. 
Lerda exists rather to foster greater economic development through new construction and improvements to existing properties, resulting in stronger economic development than would occur in the absence of the designation. Thus, a Lerda designation is a win-win for Dutch Valley Foods and the township. Uh, my name is George Mubarak. I'm Vice President of Strategic Projects at Dutch Valley. I have Dale Brubaker with me. Uh, some of you may know Dale. He's leading the current expansion project. He's our VP of Facilities and Property. And Tim Horseman, who is our attorney from Monique, McNeese, Wallace, and Newark. So just a quick bit of company history, if some of you may not be aware of it. Um, in the late 60s, uh, Clarence Burke Holder opened a retail grocery store in Myerstown. He grew his bulk food business to include items like sugar, raisins, oatmeal, cocoa, rice, spread the idea to independent farm markets and grocery retailers in the tri-county area of South Central Pennsylvania. In the mid to late 70s, Clarence acquired the Antilles Sugar and Spice Company, changed the name to Dutch Valley Food Distributors and hired his brother, Mel, as the uh, company's first salesperson. In the mid to late 80s, Dutch Valley Food Distributors moved to 10 acres of land along Route 5, 501 in Marion Township, where the facility remains today. And in 1988, Mel purchased the company from his brother Clarence. Our most recent warehouse expansion prior to the current project was 30,000 square foot feet completed in 2009. In 2010, Dutch Valley acquired a deli meat and cheese distributor in Millersburg, Ohio. Since then, a new distribution center has been built there with property for potential expansion. In 2012, a successful transfer of ownership to Mel Sons, first generation to second generation, was completed. Matt Burkholder becomes president and CEO. Presently, we uh, employ over 360 people with our corporate headquarters in Marion Township. Our, our Marion Township campus includes over 200,000 square feet of warehouse space, full service truck center, office space, and training rooms. The warehouse holds an estimated 5,000 items such as candy, chocolates, nuts, dried fruits, baking supplies, packaging supplies, specialty items like organic and gluten-free foods. Um, the little bags I left you was just an attempt to kind of give you a small illustration, small taste of what we do, if you will. Products are delivered into 29 states by our own fleet of local and long distance trucks. Currently, our expansion is a phase one warehouse expansion. It's about 77,000 square feet and it'll bring the total campus to approximately 307,000 square feet. An important upgrade with this expansion is the installation of fire suppression to the entire new building, existing warehouses and administrative offices. The new phase one warehouse building is expected to be finished by the end of 2022. Occupancy is expected in January when we will begin to consolidate products currently stored in three off-campus warehouse locations. Racking is projected to be on site by the end of November. New high capacity equipment, unfortunately, won't be delivered until May and December of next year. Future expansion considerations include a possible phase two build on to the current phase one. You'll see that marked on the, on the map um, that I gave you. And then there's a possible phase three development on our property, which is on the west side of 501. Important to note that the driving, force, the driving force behind our expansion is summed up in our company's vision. The full statement is on the back of our business cards. But the most relevant excerpt that captures our reasons for being here today is to be measured in terms of true significance and ever increasing ability to give back and to help needs of people in remarkable and redeeming ways. Simply stated, we have a, we call that sharing what's good. That's our tagline. I can cite many examples of how we do that, but most recently, fresh in my mind is this past Monday, we had our 14th annual charity golf tournament. We call it the Fireman's Classic. And what we do with the proceeds of that is we donate to eight local volunteer fire companies in the, in the surrounding area. It includes Marion a Fire Company and Mount Etna and Union and Myerstown. And, uh, and we're able to donate $40,000 this year. Uh, that's just a sample of the kinds of things the company is doing consistently. It's the heart of our company. And to fulfill that mandate, to keep doing it, we need, we need to keep growing successfully. And we'd like to do that right here in Marion Township. 
We believe alerted designation for the property is necessary to encourage greater economic development of our property, resulting in higher property tax revenues and more commerce accruing to the benefit of the township and its residents. Alerted designation will demonstrate the township's commitment to economic development and prosperity in the region and encourage an acceleration of our plans for future expansion of our business. And, and as I mentioned, enjoy these small gifts, but really my, my desire was to give you a little taste of what we do, a couple of brochures that expand on that a little bit. And um, at this time, we would really just be pleased to take any questions you may have. Thank you. So I, I, I forgive me, I do not yep. watch anything about the permitting. So mm -hmm. this does not impact our- It, it will not change current revenue. Current, current revenue. And there's it's basically a tax rate for right. any improvement. Right. And so you know, down the road, there there's no other large company that are that develops in Marion Township. So well, I don't think they're talking about the whole cash. Right. No, no, it's, it's, right. But I'm saying I'm saying there's there's nothing else as far as yeah, revenue. We don't in, we don't right? have any other industry that would right. seek something like right. this. No. Mm -hmm. I, I personally don't have a problem with it. I know my my only academic experience with LERTA is it's typically used as like a revitalization for like derelict or problematic things, but that's not its sole use. Right. So, I mean, I'm on board with this if you guys are. I'm fine. So, I'm fine. Um, I guess the next step would be let's make a motion to approve the LERTA designation for uh, Dutch Valley Foods. Second. Um, we actually plan to come back next mm -hmm. month with a formal resolution for your consideration. Uh, okay. To, to okay. One of the requirements to learn the statute is that you form a public hearing. Mm -hmm. So there is an advertisement uh, required for that. We're happy to take that on and uh, provide that to your solicitor. Okay. Yeah, uh, that would be super. I know there's a vote on the table, but you, so do you have any details on? I know you've been talking to the school district. Do you have any details on what this would? look like potentially as far as the the time period yeah. of the learning or, or yeah so we're still in those discussions uh, we're going to be in front of the, the school district on october 12th for a similar meet and greet what uh, time is that meeting uh we'll be there at 6 30. okay uh and my hope is by that point we'll have a good sense of yeah. what we're talking about in terms of the exemption how much you know what percentage we're talking about because ultimately the i think the, the plan will be Whatever the school district is willing to to consider is what we what we would right. ask the township to consider. Um, so the plan would be to meet the school district on the twelfth. We'll then communicate with your solicitor what the the plans would be for that for that proposal for your consideration at your next meeting. Um, once uh, if the township is willing to proceed, we would then go back to the school district in November for their approval. Okay, so you're talking about a public hearing here in yeah. November, uh, in October. One of the so one of the requirements to learn is. You as the township, you have to hold that hearing before we're able to go to the school district to to request them to consider this. Yeah, okay. so that's going to be a tight, real tight time frame. So, I mean, we'll need to know on the thirteenth of October. Yeah, and we and we may very well. The hope will be that we'll know well before this fall. I mean, those discussions okay. are ongoing, and the hope is that we can get that ironed out the next week or so. Yeah, so probably would it be sensible to just table the motion for now? I mean, I think at this point we're we're okay with it. We'll approve it. It's just a matter of figuring out this minutia of it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you could proceed with the motion to, to take the next step in the process. Okay. And um, it makes sense to probably authorize me to, to advertise at the October meeting for the public hearing. Okay. And so. To, Put the ordinance together. I mean, we got to pass an ordinance and then yeah. the school district That's does correct. a resolution. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Sue, so I'd like to amend yeah. amend the motion just to smidge. Make sure you talk loud so I can yep. hear it so in the thing. The amended bit of the motion would be to approve the, the LERTA request so that it can proceed to the next stage and authorize uh, the solicitor to advertise the public hearing. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Thank you very much for coming out. And we, we, we appreciate you being a part of the community. Thanks for the go yes. there. Yeah. We appreciate yeah. We appreciate you guys. Very much so. Good night. Sure. Yeah.
Next item on the agenda is the CWPLD, the 37 Main Street self-storage units. At last month's meeting, we conditionally approved the final plan subject to the completion of all of the items outlined in McCarthy Engineering's review letter on August the 11th. Uh, the uh, also contingent upon the receipt of the NPDES permit. Uh, we're still waiting for the approvements agreement and the financial surety letter of credit. So until we get that back in, really. Yeah, that's me. Oh, uh, yeah. You're, you're waiting on me to do the agreement. But okay. I, I just got the cost estimate, which was just approved at like 400 and something thousand. Yeah. So we'll get that done. Okay. Okay. Very good. Next is the Act 537. Uh, as we've mentioned previously, the SEO is currently doing inspections in the Northwest District. We did send a response letter to Tim Wagner at the DEP regarding the status of our plan implementation. We've not heard anything back yet. I'm hoping no news is good news. Um, I attended a meeting on October the 21st at the Mobile Store Sewer Authority regarding the potential connection to their sewer system and possible revisions to the 2011 Intermunicipal Agreement, uh, which would include us as a bulk sewer customer and possibly increase our capacity that we're looking for slightly. Um, they have allotted around 60 to 65,000 gallons. Um, there's a proposed development near Stonecroft that would uh, potentially put us slightly outside of that range, uh, which is why we'd be looking at a potential increase in capacity. Uh, we would also need to set up an escrow account with the WSA as we start to move through this so that we can cover any uh, engineering or um, essentially legal fees that we may have as they start to, to look at this. Um, one of the things that they are going to be doing in the more immediate future is an EDU assessment. They're going to be looking at their, their planning to make sure that they have the capacity, uh, basically looking at their, their long-term forecasts and saying, okay, we had this development possibly going in here. We haven't heard anything for more than a decade. It's probably never going to happen. We can free up 3,000 gallons or 4,000 gallons or whatever. Um, and then they'll respond back to us as, okay, you have 60 or 65 now, and we can potentially give you another 15 mm -hmm. um, or whatever the case may be. So that's step one. And that's just uh, some engineering time and potentially some, I think, solicitor time in terms of going over some things. Um, Andy, have there been any updates from the Kozlov side of the, the equation on that or? Okay. Okay. I mean, that's relatively recent. I'm not surprised that there isn't an update yet, but that's something we'll, we'll have to go through. The, the good news, though, is the, the WSA seems very uh, keen to work with us. Okay. Um, yeah, that's right, because you went to the meeting. Yeah, they're, okay. they're, they have a very positive attitude for it, and they're, they're looking forward to working with us. Um, they, uh, they did express that any of the, I don't want to say ill will or, or animosity in the past was never from the WSA. It was mostly from interactions with the township, and there was a, apparently a situation where we didn't pay a bill for more than a year. Oh. Um, and I was like, that's... Rest assured, that's not going to happen anymore. We have a, a good track record now of making sure things are paid and yes. paid on time. So we have a, a good good relationship there, I think. So more to come on that. Just as an aside, in, mm -hmm. the, in the second office space, there's a bulletin board. We're trying to keep track of everything. Everything is outlined. We're going to do check marks to make sure we keep up to date with all the tasks. Good. So that's for you guys to take a look at. I'm going to try to keep up with that weekly. Okay. So. Good. Yeah, we're, we're repurposing the AA room as additional yeah. office space. So uh, next up on the agenda is the Category 4 LSA grant. Uh, our friends at Hydroterra are here tonight to tell us a little more about that. Uh, but they're helping us with the application uh, to get a grant for design and engineering costs around the, the project. The submission deadline for that is September 30th, so we will need to decide the amount to apply for and the percentage that we will match. Um, we can apply for the exact amount of funds needed uh, for this particular phase of the projects as supported by the engineer's cost estimate or less. Um, I don't think we'd want to go for less. Um, we, cannot, we cannot apply for more funds than are actually officially listed in the estimate or accounted for. So, uh, Joe or Kim, do you want to up and yeah. say a few things? We were uh, Joe Baldad, the five repair directors, uh, and Lucy Roses, uh, our president tonight. We're really here just to answer any questions that you all may have. I'm not sure if anybody's seen the engineer's estimate. I believe Andy has has seen a picture of it, or uh, and I don't think you have. No, so I think I saw I'll, the numbers. 
We did not send that over. So we just pulled the final numbers uh, together this week. And I could tell you that the total uh, engineering um, estimate with legal fees is going to be $524,666. We cannot match. Yeah. Uh, well, we're not matching. We're not matching the whole thing. Right. So, um, so the, the thinking here is, and from what Kim told us on the workshop meeting, is there really isn't a substantial yeah. difference in consideration where if you do 1%, 5%, 50%. Um, it's really mostly just a show of commitment on your part that you are putting something forward. So yeah. it, there's there's not really an element of being too low or point of insulting. Right. Yeah, I'm kind of inclined to say with the number being as high as it is, we do 1%. Okay. Um, and Kim, we know that we're going to be applying for other grants and we may have to show commitment to those. So having money available to do that too. Yeah. And to ask Madam Governor, let me sum it up. As we are doing the numbers, taking a look at this grant in particular, mm -hmm. for the threshold, the suggestion from DCED is to stay 500 or under. My suggestion would be if we can show a strong showing for this one, so it's at 524, mm -hmm. if perhaps the township would be able to put 25. $25,000, $25, it gets it under 500. And can we use the ARP funds towards that? Because it's the sewer. Sure yeah, yeah. We so, they, right. they so we've got $201,000 right now, technically from the ARP. Mm -hmm. That's more from the strategic yeah. point. Uh, yeah. You know, having done these grants in the past, there yeah. always seems to be a We're, sweet spot. We, yeah. I mean, that's the number I thought of in my head, 25,000, but. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't have a problem with that. Are you okay with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm sweating right now. I'm feeling a little sick to my stomach too. Because <laughs> it's, 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 it's a huge commitment. I mean, you know, this is, but if that's what, you know, we need to do, that's what we need to do to get this, you know. 25,000 is better than paying 10 million. Yeah. 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 Yep. yeah. <laughs> that is true. Yep. All right. I'm. I'm okay with that. Yeah, so it'd be a 5% match. Yeah, then, yeah. Just for the, the sake of clarity yeah. on that. And I think that's what we needed to hear from you guys, like what an amount suggested. And we're going to need that guidance throughout the entire process, to be honest. So. Yeah, some, yeah. some of this, um, this might be an engineer question. Andy, you might know this. I know with the Act 537, when everything is all said and done and the dust is settled, there is a certain reimbursement that we'll get from the state in terms of uh, planning, prep, and some of those other costs. There, there was. Yeah. There was. Oh, there was. I don't know if that's still it, years no. ago. There yeah. was a reimbursement. Yeah. And there is still currently a fifty percent match if you all fill the paperwork and submit it for a grant. Okay. That would have meant that you would send in what they call it a tasking activity report or a car the special DDP language, but it's really just an estimate of cost to prepare the five thirty seven plan. Mm -hmm. Knowing how long it took, uh, I'm not sure if you know, that was ever submitted or not, but um, certainly a little bit of research back at DED would, would be able to figure out if indeed there was that paperwork submitted in the past uh, to prepare the grant. I think it, I think it was. Being that the 537 plan is approved, yeah. you should be eligible to receive whatever money uh, was put aside in that grant. Okay. Yeah, let's let's check that out. So we just have to also make sure that we budget this mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. If I could just add one more piece. The, Absolutely. The, oh, the estimate uh, that I just presented to you all, I, I, mean, I know it's a little late, but we'll be having four and all together. Yeah. That is based on the 537 plan as the concept was shown in the, five, in the five, uh, 537 plan. Now, we actually think that there's ways to reduce that cost of infrastructure. So this is really a worst case uh, estimate for, for the preparation uh, of a, the design. Uh, there's a lot of, lot of nuts and bolts in there that in the field need to be in that. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd much rather go into it worst case scenario and be pleasantly surprised rather than the other way around. Yeah. So 
And I, honestly, I'm blown away by all your paperwork and documentation, everything I read through. I'm like, oh my God, this is what should have been done the first time around. This is what, how it should have gone. And yeah, it's just, it's so impressive. Thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> Thanks is all on our ends. Yes. Uh, yes yeah. It's certainly uh, been, you know, a blessing to work with Sue and you all pulling this together. You know, after we dug into the 537 plan, things just started popping up. And, uh, yep. you know, I, we're really hopeful that this grant will roll right through. She needs intelligence uh, with uh, LSA, the folks at LSA have been promising. So, do we yeah. ever hear anything back about an income study? Uh, so, we looked at an income study with regards to the um, the community block grant. Yes. Okay. And our census data seems a bit too high. The incomes for the area, okay. it's much higher. We need a minimum, I believe, if my memory serves, is 51%. has to be low to moderate income. Okay. And we are significantly below that. Okay. Significantly. Okay. So that kills the chance for the USDA grants on anything else. Yeah. Then. Yeah. Well, USDA grants are typically the last, last yeah. payments. Yeah. Uh, you know, so there's a lot of other yeah. potential grants out there that we'll want to look yeah. at for you all uh, in the meantime. And yeah, a lot of those open up next year, right? Exactly. Like, yeah. 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 Infrastructure. Yeah. So are we, are we talking about a grant number of 500,000 even? Or are we talking about 524? Well, we would be asking for the 524 or 666 minus 25,000, which, you know, forgive me, I can't remember whatever that is. It's, well, it's you just 7 7 percent. It's a 4.77%. You can make it an even five. We'll do the math. Yeah. Or uh, I think if you want to do the 4.77 and, and pencil the number into the resolution, that would be fine as well. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. yeah. We're reading my mind. Yeah. Okay. So we'll change it to 5.4. We'll just change the first page and then send that. Yeah. We can sign it tonight. Okay, good. That's why you should well, sign it down. Yeah. 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 Peter and yeah. Down. yeah. We'll sign it tonight. We'll just change the page and send that to the first Yeah. Yeah. So, Andy, does the does the actual full number come out? Four point seven seven percent. Okay. It's, it's probably some good. place close to that. Check my math. Okay. What was the um? What was the actual full number? It was five hundred and twenty-four thousand. Yeah. Six sixty-six. That was not the subject. In English. Yeah, that would uh four point seven would actually be, be just shy. So let me do the seven seven. Four point seven. <laughs> Good. Check that wrong. You got it. Yeah, that would be 4.77 would be $25,000 uh, $25, and $26.56. I'm okay with that. Yeah. yeah. We can put the number, we can put a, a dollar value in there or a percentage, I believe, in four. Yeah, we, we have both listed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds good to me. Be four point seven six percent. Yeah, you got the same number. You just, I did. You just did your math wrong. All you have to do is take their number divided by twenty five thousand. The fraction. I, yeah, it's okay. I, I did it. It's the, okay. I did it the long way, it's but okay. we got we got to the same place, Irene. I'm oh, sorry, my family's a bunch of math teachers. So um, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. this engineering is math here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But anyway, we're, yes, we're there. Twenty five thousand. So we actually have a resolution that. 2022-6 for this. Okay. So uh, motion to approve resolution 2022-6. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Lots of documents will be coming in very early. Thanks, Kim. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I get it. I get it at 7.30. I'm going to be here that early. <laughs> 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 it's even like 8 o'clock.
Mm -hmm. I forwarded you the correct information. What? I forwarded you those statements that you needed. The correct oh, year. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Every, I thought yeah. it was 2021. Like, yeah. Everything's in the drawer. You need a hard copy. Okay. It's, it's in the folder yeah. label. Yeah. So. All right. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the uh, Volunteer Fire Relief Association funds. Thank you for coming out. Thanks. Uh, we received $14,599.32 uh, via direct deposit uh, from the PA Auditor General on September 21st, 2022. Uh, Act 205 requires us to give these funds to the Marion Fire Company Relief Association within 60 days and to complete Form 706B. At the workshop meeting, uh, we made a motion to authorize the above amount be paid to the Marion Volunteer Fire Relief Association and then complete Form 706B. So no further action needed other than to actually execute it. No problem. Okay. Next up on the agenda is trick-or-treat night. At the workshop meeting, we made a motion to set the trick-or-treat night for October 31st from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. and to advertise in the Myerstown Merchandiser and Reading Eagle Community Calendars. This is the same date and time as Wolmelsdorf, just like we did last year. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the office equipment. Uh, a motion was made at the workshop to authorize the secretary to purchase some additional shelving, a 30-inch wide and a 36-inch wide unit, uh, totaling $69.98 for the one and $149 for the other. Uh, and to also purchase two storage boxes for the rolled plans at $101.88 plus tax. So, Sue, so whenever you want to get those, go, feel free. Well, I started to order them, and then I got the shipping amount. No, we're going to pick them up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Next is the hallway lights. Uh, we have uh, kind of an issue with the one hallway light where it doesn't tend to work a whole lot, and the other light needs to be lowered a bit so that it's not obstructed by the HVAC system. We made a motion at the workshop to authorize the secretary to call an electrician about the needed work for lowering the fixture and making sure that the one outside of the men's bathroom actually works. Tonight I turned it on. This is probably just something <laughs> loose in there. It doesn't yeah. work. Who knows? Okay, next is the cleaning service. Um, Lynette Molko, our cleaning lady, uh, left a message that she needs to resign because of health issues. Um, we have received proposals from the above and beyond, which was $120 a month, and Emmerich Cleaning Service for $90 a month. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, no. functionally, no. I don't think so. Okay. Um, we can table it. We can table it for now. Do you want to send us just a, a written proposal of what you what your costs would be for for cleaning the building and what it would cover? So, so the first floor, clean the bathrooms, mm -hmm. toilets, floor, bowl, everything. Dust the window sills. Dust in there what you can. Um, the she vac she now. vacuumed all the flooring. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the second grade classroom too. Um, and then she wet mop the all the flooring. Okay. And how many days how many hours a week or how many days? Once a month. Once, once a month. month. Once a month. Once a month. Yeah. Okay. Based on based on the comment from the community, we'll table that for next mm -hmm. month. Just send me something written. Yeah. Okay. Next is the hiring of an assistant secretary. Uh, Irene, you've been yep. calling several yep. candidates. Um, um, I'd like to just give a little bit of feedback. Um, I say we had well over 20 people respond. I've told people, I've made, I've been in contact with at least 14 of those candidates. Um, I'd like to, at this time, pull the ad because we have a, a, a wealth of response. Mm -hmm. uh, and I apologize, I wish I was here for the workshop meeting. I want to invite five of those people to come and to speak to us in person. So if I have your permission then for the next, uh, for the workshop meeting, I'm gonna ask people to come in to, um, if, I guess we, we give them a particular time yeah. um, just to meet with people and say, you know, there was, I would say there was three that really stood out. A total of five, uh, I think would be a healthy perspective. I know what my opinion is of, of the individuals and I asked extremely non-specific um, questions and it was it was quite fun. <laughs> Some of the responses that I received, um, 
you know, everything for, I just need a job or I just want to get into government mm -hmm. to, um, you know, people with prior experience to one person who was, is willing to do whatever it takes. So, okay. Yeah. Could you, um, could you send us the list of the, sure. the short list? Yes. So yes, I will. I will. Uh, any, any of the ones that we got digitally through indeed i put on yep. the, the google drive and i think sue I'm you said to, but i think i missed like the last two maybe but uh, yeah. okay we just um, really if we could actually there. pull the ad so we don't get oh, yeah 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 I, I have yeah. No, uh, you want to make a motion to pull the ad yes i'd like to make a motion to pull the ad from indeed with respect to hiring an assistant secretary second roll call peter hi irene hi Jim. Hi. Do we want to wait that long? That's three weeks. If, um, I mean, we'd have to advertise if, a special meeting well, otherwise. The other the other option then is I'll give you my short list if you want to call these individuals and see what your feedback is. You go through you, just like we did when we were selecting here's, supervisors. Here's an idea. Yeah. Why don't we do that? We do yeah. me and Jim can call people on the short list. Let's yeah. narrow it down to two maybe three people sure, sure. to actually have here at the workshop and, and then we're and done. do a new yep. panel interview and be done yep. with it yeah okay it's it's part-time it's like 10 20 hours a week at the most and i think we had spec that out of what 17, 17 an hour yep yeah it's we're we're falling behind on filing and things al and it's just because it no failing on Sue's part. There's just too much yeah, stuff to do. Too much work to do. We don't have enough hands to do it, so we need to bring do you in somebody. Want to apply for the job? Would you like to apply for the job? It's... Well, we don't take any money. We don't take any. I don't take any pay for coming here working as a treasurer. All right. But I'm saying so. So between the three of us, we've saved the town roughly ninety thousand dollars in the course of a six-year term. So right. Yeah. Yeah, it's in our budget. It, it's in our budget. Well, we're important to note, Al. We're not we're not paying. It's so there's there's a whole whole bit of discussion around that. So, Al, the reason we're looking for grants is to to put it bluntly, uh, we can't we. Al, we can't do that. We cannot do that. Get there. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it's a long agenda. We're going to keep moving, but we can't do that, Al, because it's already been submitted. It's already been approved. If we pull it, we will get sued. That's the cold, hard reality of it. And it's we, we have to go through the motions, Al. And if we if we can't find affordable alternatives to it, we at least have legs to stand on to say why we're not being in compliance. Don't need it. There's a Okay, guys, guys, guys. I, I, if you wanna, if you wanna take this conversation externally, you feel free. However, there are Al. Hey, Al, hello. Why don't you guys go talk about it outside? Yeah. Okay. If you want to, don't continue, interrupt the meeting. If you want to continue go. this, go outside. But, well, be, be civil, Al. Um, but. We're gonna we're gonna keep moving. So we've we've settled uh, agenda item ten. So we're gonna move on to eleven. So the Aikens accounting letter of engagement for the twenty twenty two audit. Uh, a motion was made at the workshop meeting to accept this and to sign the letter of engagement. Um, Sue, did I sign that yet? Yes, okay. I signed it already. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, nothing more on that. The field work is gonna start sometime in February, and uh, because of the the filing changes that we've made over the past couple of years, it's going to be a, a very easy exercise. We don't have a lot of prep work to do for it because we we live in constant readiness for an audit. Yep, yep. So I'm so happy. Everything is tip top shape. Good. Uh, next is the Jacob Weiss Poultry Operation Letter of Credit. Uh, the request has been made by Jacob Weiss Poultry Operation to release the letter of credit in full based on the approval of the as-built plan for the property and the completion of all improvements. McCarthy Engineering has recommended that the fifth and final release of their entire remaining letter of credit amount of $28,161.89, uh, contingent upon payment of any and all fees to Marion Township, uh, be made. We made a motion at the workshop to authorize the final release of the letter of credit pending any payment and fees that are still outstanding to Marion Township. Everything's been good. Yeah. Uh, next is the Marlon Ray Martin Poultry Operation Letter of Credit. Uh, this request was made by Marlon Ray Martin to reduce the letter of credit 
uh, based on the 9-14-2022 site inspection of the current improvements construction, Carthen Engineering recommends the release number three of the letter of credit in the amount of $20,233.71, with an amount to be retained of $26,479.66. The outstanding remaining items are as-built plan and recording, NOI termination, and an 18-month maintenance bond, 15% of the cost. Uh, a motion was made at the workshop meeting to authorize release number three of the letter of credit in the amount of $20,233.71. Next item on the agenda is the Creekview Dairy Operation. Uh, this is 952 Route 419. According to their improvement and maintenance agreement dated 223.17, they were to complete all stormwater and other improvements within 18 months uh, or by uh, July 23rd of 2018. Their letter of credit is being held and auto increasing yearly. Carthy Engineering sent them a letter on 8-18-22 indicating that they needed to complete all of the required improvements within 30 days of the letter or submit a final formal written request for an extension of time with a detailed timeline of completion. A motion was made at the workshop to authorize McCarthy Engineering to move to the next step. Um, so this is the this is the same one I was talking to you about earlier, right? The, mm -hmm. Yeah. So um for you guys, I got a call from Mike Sensenig at, uh, or I don't know if it's Mike Sensenig, I should recant that. Uh, Mike from Sensenig Excavating okay. uh, about the property uh, and the swale. He wanted to have uh, one of the board members come out and take a look at it and discuss it. Um, I said, we can certainly do that. However, we need to schedule that. And it's a situation where we definitely need to have the engineer there because none of us are engineers. Um, I think the, the underlying subtext is there trying to amend or change items that are in their stormwater plan because they don't want to have to do them. Um, and I don't really know where that stands other than uh, the statement was made that they had submitted a request for that and it was denied. So I think at this point, we need to have an engineer take a look at it mm -hmm. and give us a commentary on where that actually stands. If it's in the plan, it either needs to be done or it needs to have an exception approved. And we need to get that in writing one way or the other. So I'll follow back up with the, the gentleman that I spoke to this morning and let him know that we can set something up. We'd be happy to. However, we want a request in writing for that meeting so that we can schedule appropriately to have a, a board member and uh, an engineer out there. Next is the road projects for 2022, which includes the culverts. Uh, line painting was completed. However, the crosswalks on Main Street still need to be done. Um, have you heard anything from A1, Butch? Start yep, we got to start calling again. All right. No, That's I'll okay. start calling. They have a they have a unfortunate history of doing this. Yeah, I'll call. Okay. They've been paid, correct? They've been paid. They've been paid. <laughs> yeah, whatever you did last time, do that again. Wow, well, just firm on the phone. I, you know, I was just polite, and then they called back, and I'm like, I just spoke to one of your guys, and then. I called, I think, a week later for follow-up. It was it's strange. That's I mean, I called them yeah. a bunch of times, and I know yeah. Mitch called them a bunch of times, and that didn't get us much of anywhere. Um, I would let them know that next time we they win a bid, we'll pay half, and we'll pay half the other half on completion. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. You, yeah. And historically, so sure we've, we've used day one for ages, yeah. and I don't know that we've ever had this problem other than the past couple of years. So I don't know. I don't know what the deal is, but I agree with you, Jim. If we're, if the dynamics yeah. of our relationship have changed, yep. then yep. they've changed. Right. So. You know, lots of companies have lost employees. Lots of companies are having issues with supplies, etc. So we know that that's part of the factor, but they need to communicate to us. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Right. Well, but that's the only. That's the only thing it's they painted though. Yeah. It was the yellow paint. Um, so yeah, we'll have to we'll have to pester them about that. I'll start calling tomorrow. I mean, between the, the three of us, crosswalks are white. But yeah, that's they, and that was the thing yeah. that's confusing is they had they had all the white paint early on, and they were like, oh, we're not sure if we're going to be able to do the yellow paint this year because yes. we don't have it, and then that's the only thing yeah. that they actually did. I'll, so I'll okay. they, they um, seem to like a, a woman telling them what to do. So. Uh, the other thing is yeah. the pedestrian bollards. I found some that look pretty decent for about a third of what they tend to go for. They're $94.99 instead of about 300 bucks. Um, it's a, a thermoform plastic sign that's flat on either side and it has a, a rubber, thick rubber mat thing that you slide over the top and it holds it down. Um, 
I don't think I'm going to be able to find them any cheaper than this, to be honest. Um, I don't know what the shipping is, but it can't be that much. Um, do we want to get like three of these, one for each intersection on Main Street? I would. Yeah. Okay. Um, somebody want to make a motion to authorize me to purchase three of these for the cost of ninety four dollars, about ninety four dollars and ninety nine cents plus uh, shipping. You go for it, Tim. So moved. Okay. Say again, purchase three. Three for the a cost of ninety four dollars and ninety nine cents plus shipping. And can we put a big pipe in the middle of those so when somebody we'll, decides they're going to hit it, we'll, we'll screw them down. They'll have a big surprise. Fill, fill the cement. <laughs> um, so Jim made the motion. Jim piggybacked my statement as his motion. I'll second. Roll call. Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Uh, also in the, the agenda for roads and other work of that nature. Uh, we have the culverts. The culverts have been, uh, I think they're starting to look at manufacturing them. There was a question about dividing it up into pieces. Um, I need to follow up with uh, Butch and with Ryan about placement, if that's going to be too heavy for us to deal with or if we have to get it split into smaller parts. Um, I don't remember the the weights. Well, from what Ryan told me, they manufactured them in sections. Yeah, but I think there was a question about if they had to split up the sections because of it being a certain tonnage, like if it was going to be too heavy for us. I got to go back and listen to the meeting on Saturday because I don't remember. Equipment to use. Well, I mean, if we're if we're going to have to rent a crane or like something to place it, or if Ryan's going to have to place it or anything like that, we need to be able to to know what the size is for the. <laughs> Well, I mean, if we have to rent something, that's the question, because I, I want to say like 26 tons comes to mind. Like, I'll have to re-listen to the recording, but it was it was heavy. Um, I don't I don't really see a need, because if we're going to have to rent something, we're going to have to rent something, whether it's 13 tons or 26 tons. So um, I'll, I'll close the loop on that, but they've, they've started in earnest uh, the manufacturing of some of those pieces. Okay. So... Uh, that was with Monarch Products, again, just for, for the sake of the record. Um, and they're going to be manufacturing all four box culverts. Uh, the GP7 permit was denied originally. That's being resubmitted. I've not heard any update from uh, the engineer on that, but I will be following up to see if there's any change on the GP7 status. Uh, Al, the extension of the stormwater pipe along Marion uh, Drive and Main Streets um, and any other regrading and things that have to be done. Um, engineer is going to be doing a site survey and a design on that. And uh, if you want, I can shoot you a text message or give you a call as soon as I hear back from them. But we're really just waiting for, we're just waiting for the the what. We know, we know that it's needed, but we need to know what to do specifically to abate it properly. Again, common, common sense dictates that, but sometimes that's not always exactly what's needed or sometimes that more than just what you and i on the yeah sometimes there's more than what you can you and i can see and i'm, I'm not an engineer i don't make any pretenses no, about that know. there might be i don't know right I'm, I'm, getting, getting that question answered yeah and then once we know we'll have it's something that the road crew should be able to do we'll turn butch loose on getting it done right away so <laughs> And once we have the engineer out, we'll we'll run with it. It's approved. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is the PennDOT waiver for the engineering fees. A motion was made at the workshop meeting to authorize the letter for the waiver. I signed that before the meeting, and we're sending that over to Retu. So that'll be off the agenda for next month. Uh, next is the township engineering proposal. Uh, we received a, a proposal from... Craft engineering and from system design. I believe we have somebody from system design. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to come up and say a few words? System design engineering has been uh, with us since 1988. We were formed to do, you know, municipal engineering. So municipal engineering, sanitary and water is what, what we do. We're 90% of our business is in Berks County and Schuylkill County. Um, do you have that email that I sent the cost comparison? Yeah. Uh, I was just pulling yeah. it up now. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think that uh, our record, uh, if you follow, call any references, uh, will speak highly of us. 
Uh, I think our experience uh, is uh, second to no one in the county, and we would have we have many townships and boroughs that are in your same situation, small municipalities, very tight budgets. So we're very used to working in those circumstances. Okay. Any questions from me? I'd be happy to answer them. Um, I, I did have one question because I read through the proposal. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it, it's just it's something that I just I didn't see in there. If we were to design a new building, is that something that your that your group does too? Oh yes, built into something. Okay, that was the only uh, thing. Municipal I building or municipal, building for the wastewater treatment plant? Uh, no, right? municipal building. Yes, we do municipal building. Okay, that Should was be. about the only question that I had. Okay. Windsor Township yeah. this building is not far from here. Windsor Township. Yeah, from side by side. Yes. Yeah, so yes. Yeah. And, and so, so I had sent an email. Um, we did a side by side comparison, mm -hmm. and it, they're, it's not they're not technically equivalent because they were able to list more mm -hmm. top, uh, features for it but i think they have to be less expensive on on if you look at yeah. it on the surface yeah. however right. if you look at for example like professional engineer right. and you look at engineer right. here right the, the top rate right is actually higher right. 121 is higher than the 116 right right so the variability right. wise right. You, right it's probably about right. the same right so I mean, I don't, I don't have a lot of things that strike out at me as concerns, to no. be honest. No, um, I, mean, I, I, I read both proposals back to back. Yeah, so. the only thing that I would say is yeah. there's a, there, there's a good synergy, um, and this is, this is a right. judgmentless statement. Um, since we already have crafts doing the one thing, we have an established relationship with crafts, mm -hmm. um, and it would honestly be maybe a little more simplistic in some of the things that we do from tracking and mm -hmm. everything else having just the one company to go through but mm -hmm. with that said I'm I'm not opposed to mm -hmm. doing the two that's what we already do yeah same people on it's craft craft engineering and craft code so yeah I don't know if I, I don't know if they're in the same building or not they are yeah yeah thank it's you sir so principle. much for coming tonight we really yeah, appreciate it yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank, thank you for coming yeah. out it's, um, yeah Put the time effort into yeah. making a right. so yeah. No. Oh, yeah. No, no we, no. we appreciate it. And we want to yeah. make a, a serious decision on this because this is something that we want to have a, a, a lasting relationship with. It's not something we want to turn over an engineer right. every couple of years. Right. Um, it's an awkward moment. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. 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 But I yeah. mean, I like system design proposal. I thought it was very thorough. Um, after reading through it and after reading the other proposal, you know. Um, yeah. So I, I need you two to, you know. Yeah, I'm I'm really kind of on the fence because, like I said, yeah, we have that established relationship with Kraft. Right. Um, pardon, right. pardon the idiom, but it's the devil we know. Right. Um, and I, I do agree with you that the. The proposal they gave was extremely well written and i, I do right. enjoy that they broke out Everything. their cost schedule a lot more granularly right um their their schedule has easily probably 20 things on it whereas crafts has four mm -hmm. so um yeah tough decisions right which leads me to believe that they're more thorough my thoughts are both firms are, are highly respected highly confident and I work well with both of them. It's a it's a good lawyer statement. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's I mean, <laughs> yeah. That's that's the best kind of lawyer yeah. statement. And uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna say guess, I'm not gonna say one of them. I guess the other thing is is it's the sanitation aspect of it yeah. also. That's why I was leaning towards systems design. Yeah. I don't know what Kraft's experience has been with that. So the one yeah. the one thing for consideration, yeah. and this is me just throwing everything out on the table is because of our uh, kind of partnership with Tiger Terra now, right. we don't have a, a huge demand for wastewater engineer because we're using right, that firm right, for that. Right. However, after everything settles one way or the other, yeah. it, it, there is a certain benefit to having an engineering company that has background in wastewater so that they pair well with the SEL. Yep. Um, so. Should we do a secret ballot and then answer it? <laughs> I don't know if we have to be yeah, that clandestine. Yeah. Um, honestly, I'm kind of leaning towards the, the systems design personally. 
I like Kraft. I don't want to see us sour a relationship with Kraft because I think they do a good job with the, oh, the zoning things and everything else. We'll but on board for, well, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not saying replace them. Yeah. But I'm just saying I, I don't want to see us um, poison the well there necessarily. But um, I'm more impressed by the proposal that we got from the other company if we're doing a straight apples to apples comparison to be to be blunt mm -hmm. okay so i mean <laughs> now is the time as any do we want to make a motion to um appoint them starting uh, the beginning of the year at the reorganizational meeting you want them to you want to wait until the first of the year well, I mean, I, we've got a couple of things in flight with McCarthy that are realistically going to well, take at least well, how, a month or two. How does that work for you as far as, um, you know, the current work that we have in place right now and then transitioning? Because, again, this is something I've never experienced. So how, how do we facilitate that? With the there's going to be a transition that? no matter yeah. Yeah, there's, there's, there's going to be an yeah. intermediary period. Right. Both are involved. Yeah. Well, we look at each Previous statements from McCarthy said they that's not like they're gonna just cut and run. They're they're willing to to be cooperative if right. they reach out and we need something or they they, they gotta elaborate on, on something that was done previously. Um frankly, like Blake Heigel right. even has been right. very positive about right. that anytime we've had to reach out. So um I guess the question is do we start the transition period in January, the start of the new year, or is this a transition period where we start that like next month even? Yeah. I guess Andy has any other township or borough face this kind of uh, issue. Sure. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, what, what have you seen that would have worked well, or is it all just kind of whatever? Yeah, I, I think there's a transition period. It doesn't matter when you when you start it. Okay. I don't I don't see a benefit of waiting to okay. the beginning of the year. Make it okay. October. Well, let's make look, it October first. Let's pull the band-aid off. Um, you want to make a motion, Jim? I'll make a motion that we appoint uh System design engineering effective October 1st as our new township engineer. I'll second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Dr. Carey, welcome aboard. I mean, thank you for your appointment. Um, look forward to working with all of you. Uh, Monday morning, we'll make a phone call and get things more. Okay, sounds good. Thank Perfect. you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Well, I'm sure we'll be talking. Yeah. I know with the uh, the one part of the estimate was like we don't bill you for mileage and this time. We're still gonna bill me for your time. Yeah. And so you're not nickel and diming me. So Thank instead you. of charging me for five twenty five for postage, you're gonna you're gonna charge me for the whatever time. the hour. Yeah. 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 And, no, and, I mean, and, like I said, it's it, it probably comes out in the wash. Right. Right. And everyone wants to make money, and and Just, I I enjoy working with Craft Code. I think they're a wonderful agency. They I think there's a good synergy with the township, but that 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 proposal was way more impressive. It was very nice proposal. Yeah. Yeah. And I and I have to think if they put that effort into um, then they called several times to the office where no one else has called us. Mm -hmm. Um, if they put that kind of effort into this, then I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing their engineering reports. I'm looking forward to seeing their statements. And so, you know, just the back and forth. So, yeah, I hate to say that's what made me feel really comfortable with it. So yeah. me too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And if it doesn't work out. Yeah, here we can make a different decision. Or, make a change. So, yeah, so yeah. you can always make a change. You obviously don't yeah. want to do that too much because of the, right. the, the hurdles that go along with transitioning. Yes. But yes. right, it's not like we're we're married to them into perpetuity. Yeah. So okay. Uh, next is the Comcast franchise renewal. Uh, we got a letter on the twentieth. Um, Irene, you had contacted yeah. Cohen and Associates about uh, negotiating the new contract. They charge a flat fee based on what we receive. Uh, we're still waiting for the draft of the new contract from Eric Wilden yeah. at Comcast. Assuming it's 
got any emails ready? Okay. So no. I'll 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 send the is it Phil again an email? Maybe yeah. he, he talks to eight one a lot. I don't know. The boys. No. Yeah, I mean uh, I deal with telco yeah. stuff pretty frequently at yeah. work. It's not uncommon to have long periods of silence. That's right. You and just I'll, have to you have to remind them that you exist yeah. sometimes. So, so I'll I'll send an email or kind of call to everyone. And Andy, thank you again for giving us that group. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, next up is the proposed dog leash curbing ordinance. Uh, Andy, do you have the final version? Okay. I'm so excited. Yeah. And Sue, the one the one that's in the packet is the final, right? I think so. Okay. Because I read through that and I didn't have any problems. Yeah, I read, I read this one. Yeah. 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 I think it is. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it, it probably wouldn't that. hurt to put yeah. signs up I've, in the I've park. Yeah. The park. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it's not like we have to go posting signs all over the town. No. Yeah. One or two signs on the main strip here yeah. where people walk. So this is the final draft. We haven't yet advertised it, but yeah. Uh, if it's okay with everyone, um, we'll do that for the next meeting. Yeah. So it deals with animals running at large, not being able to put large people on a leash. Yep. Um, I like picking it. up <laughs> after your after your pet. Yep. Um, like it's your animal. Yeah, I'm saying it's it's dog, been. And I did that on purpose. Yeah, yeah. We, we say uh, yeah. dog when we're talking about the the agenda item, but it is worded in a very specific way, slightly broadly, so that it does encompass any other animals that might be pets or domesticated or otherwise defecating on someone else's property. Yes, yeah, because there's been issues with that in the past. Yep. Um, so yeah. About not the animals that are prohibited, like elephants. And yeah, yeah. Crocodiles. Yeah. You know, you know, I I came across that in other in other um uh ordinances. I said I have got to include this. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I do. So you laugh. Uh, I'll I'll yeah. tell you a story some other time about uh, somebody that I work with actually has had alligators. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway. Uh, so I'm I'm okay with that. We'll have the final version next month. We'll have to advertise it. Um, do we need to authorize Andy to advertise it in advance of next month's meeting? Please. Yeah. So I'll make a motion for uh, the proposed dog leash curbing ordinance to be advertised. I'll second. Roll call. Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, next is the uh, Western Burks Joint Zoning Ordinance, Section 403. This is about the keeping of pets and small domesticated farm animals. Uh, we have a, received a draft. This would allow for the keeping of more chickens and other like animals on properties less than one acre. Uh, we are looking to make this change because we feel it better reflects the, the actual uh, use of a lot of the properties in the township being as we're a largely agrarian and agricultural uh, section of the, the community. Um, I looked over the draft. I don't have any problems with it. It incorporated the, the points that I had originally raised. Um, I guess Andy is the next step because I know this has to go through um, so, joint, planning. joint planning and then Just our planning, our, our our planning, planning and then the planning of each one of the other municipalities. And then it has to go to the Western Burks joint zoning. Um, do we have to advertise that before it goes before? Anybody else? We, we do eventually have to have a public hearing. Yeah. And how we've done it in the past is all five municipalities. We still do the hearing all at once. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well then. So does he need a do we need a motion to, to kick it off? Yeah, before our planning and then okay. assuming our planning recommends if we were to pass it on to the joint planning commission. Okay. Well, that's the next step. Okay. I'll make a motion to authorize the Western Burks Joint Zoning Ordinance section, four, section 403 amendment to be sent to the Marion Planning Commission. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Do you do that? You're just going to do that, right? Yeah, because we have one later. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then I'll come Next is the stormwater management ordinance amendment. Uh, this addresses the drainage plan requirements exemption. Um, again, I read over this, it's pretty straightforward. Um, did you guys get a chance to read it over? 
I briefly read yeah. over it. I mean, it's it's not overly complex. What it what it accomplishes, and it might be better for me to turn it over to Andy for this, but it, it addresses some of the weird stormwater related things that we have in the the community that have triggered uh, waiver requests in the past. Right, it exempts those small private projects and, and permits the drainage plan not to be required. Yeah, so, so that's just that little problem that we had. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this is another one I'd say. Uh, do we have to take this one to to planning too? Um, good question. Uh, no, we, we don't. Because yeah, it just affects Marion. Well, no, no, no. I'm not talking about the Western, but like our, our planning. Oh. Um, no, I mean, it doesn't affect our, our, our subdivision land development. Okay. Um, and I was just trying to think back of other municipalities that have just adopted the EDP stormwater, and that never went before any of the planning commission group. So I think we're free to proceed. Okay. Is this so, yeah, just yeah, I'll say I'll motion a motion to advertise the stormwater management ordinance amendment. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Okay. Next up on the agenda, this was uh something that we uh, I had asked to put on there is the developed strategic vision. Um, I think just because of the fact that we have 40 items on the agenda. Let's maybe table that one until the workshop. Okay. Um, for anybody that's curious, this is, uh, we wanted to have something on there as a talking point for kind of outlining what we want to see happen over the next five years, 10 years as a, a long reaching plan to make sure that we're right. kind of staying on track and not just running from thing to thing each right. year. It, it's not just talking about coming up with an action plan and uh, step by step on how to execute things and yeah. basically. That's what I started doing, like with the hydroterra information and all the other information that we're collecting, so that when it's time to follow through, every, the work is done, and you could just go down the list. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, next is bill paying using the credit card to pay the PA one call. Um, occasionally, we get a bill for a very low amount. That's, Fifty cents. Yeah, it's oftentimes more expensive to send them the the check than it is to actually pay the thing. Uh, so, Irene brought up that we should use the township credit card rather than sending a check. We made a motion at the workshop meeting to allow this. So going forward, we can pay that with a credit card. Thank you. Uh, next is the per capita exoneration request for Barry Sands, who is deceased on December 27th of 2020. We made a motion to accept that request at the workshop meeting. Uh, similarly, we had a, a request for Zachary Meck, who is now deceased uh, as of February 14th, 2014. A motion was made at the workshop to accept this request as well. Uh, statewide tax recovery, the close and return report was issued. Um, this is for per capita tax. It was a six page report totaling uh, $1,072.50. Uh, they have exhausted all efforts. Um, the idea was floated at the workshop. If there's people that we recognize on that list that are, are in the community, um, checking with Andy to see how we would pursue this further on that, knowing that they're they're not dead and are in fact still living in our community. And I knew I was supposed to look at that and I didn't. It's okay. I, I can okay. tell you it's a, it's a small issue because- Yeah, it's not a huge- It's a tab knowledge, but it's a tab knowledge of the- It's- So it, some of those are relatively old. Yeah. Um, One is 2010. Yeah, it's, it's, it it's goes back pretty far and yeah. it's- Wow. It's a fair number of people. It's a six page report. There's a yeah. lot of repeats on it, but it's still a fair number of people. So it's not like one person owes $500. It's, it's just interesting. This is the first time I've ever seen this. I'm here to hear. Yeah. I don't know why that is. Yeah. And it came out, <laughs> it came out to other municipalities too. Mm -hmm. And like Richland Burroughs, considering getting rid of their per capita tax is such a pain to, mm -hmm. for them to administer and deal with. So that's well, it give us five bucks. Other municipalities. Yeah. Have, have yeah, we yeah, only get five bucks out of the fifteen that you pay. Yeah, but that's I've been depositing quite a bit for county tax money. Well, it's it's quite that's a bit. It's I don't like paying still, it either. It's still the flat yeah. 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 No, every but it's just helps. Yeah. To go after yeah. it, it might be more yeah. money than it's worth. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. That was that was honestly my fear was it would we're going after somebody for fifteen bucks and it costs you or costs yeah. us a hundred dollars to have you do it. Um, yeah. No. So. I mean, what, do I, what do we have to do with this? Ignore it. No, I want it. I mean, we, we don't have to do anything with this. There's we just no don't do anything. Letter or anything. This is the thing I would find out why they sent that and then ask them. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, so I, mean, yeah. I, I would ask them what, what other people are doing. Okay. okay. I mean, they functionally, we don't even have to acknowledge it. It would just be right. us writing it down. Mm -hmm. they're, like, they're the ones that collect it. And yeah. We appoint them to collect it. Yeah, they're, they're our agency that does that. And I think I'd this. Ask them what are they going to do to well, this this is them saying that they they they're throwing in the towel essentially that they can't yes. they can't get can't get anything from these people yeah. and they're moving on. So, short of us sending them a letter, I don't think there's much more else to do. Okay. So, uh, next I, is the I Pennsylvania. I guess there's no agency, county, state, anywhere that finds out when people die so that they don't get it's, it's supposed charge to be, this or move it's, it's supposed to be the county but like i said at the workshop meeting the county doesn't always update their stuff i i know people that have moved like i know somebody that spent yeah. like a year abroad in china and they were still getting letters or uh the bills sent to their old address there that they knew the people that were still there they're like you're still getting these and they say they sent letters to like the the tax collection agency with the county. Yeah, you'd think that the county would notify our our township treasurer. I, I don't know that the so and so is dead or moved or whatever. I don't know that the county is even updating their records because they keep sending letters yeah. out to people who have moved or deceased, or I shouldn't even say letters. There's that they're actually sending bills out to people who are no longer alive or no longer in the area. So I don't know. It makes no sense to me. Of course, we don't we don't take them off the voting rolls either. So yeah. And that um, should be an easy on. one. Yeah. Next item on the yeah. agenda is uh, Pennsylvania Act 57 of 2022. This amends Section 5511.7 of the local tax collection law, uh, mandating that at the beginning of tax year 2023, a municipality's tax collector must waive interest, penalties, charges, and fines for unpaid real property taxes that accrue within the first year of property owner's acquisition of land or lease of land of a mobile home. If a waiver request is provided to the tax collector and that the it is uh, is attested that the tax notice was not received, um, this also provides the tax collector with it, uh, they have to provide the tax collector with a copy of the deed or land lease agreement for the mobile home showing a date within the last year. So to boil it down to a really fine point, um, it provisions the waiver of interest penalties and charges for the first year um, if you didn't get your bill or didn't get your bill in time. Um, we must take action either by resolution or by ordinance before our December meeting or by our December meeting uh, in order to adopt this. Uh, Andy, keep me keep me honest here. I don't think, really think we have much of a choice in that. So no, our, it's really stupid because yeah. that's the law. Yeah, and when it's yeah. still making us pass a resolution, yeah. why would we do it? We're doing a yeah. resolution yeah. that says exactly what the law says. Okay, and I'm going to make a, a broad stroke assumption here. We need to advertise that, right? We no. Need to okay. Time. Cool. Um, I'll make a motion to adopt. That's what resolution twenty twenty two dash seven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, to adopt resolution twenty two dash seven for the amendment to Pennsylvania Act fifty seven. Second. Roll call. Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next up on the agenda is the building property renovations in the new building. Uh, I went through the PowerPoint slide that you put together and I actually have it up here. Oh, so so if, can see. if you want to take a turn talking a little bit, I will be happy to scroll through the pictures as you do that. So this is the outside. We pulled up a concrete company. Let me just remind everyone, it has been extremely difficult to get any contractors to respond to us. I have called over 30 companies to give us various estimates. Very few responded. We had only one person give us an estimate for a sidewalk roughly it would be $6,800. And just keep in mind, these are last year's numbers, not, not 2022. So you can go to the next one, but it was like a telephone type of a thing with rough measurements. And so if we were to have the parking lot repaid, $17,449. This company did say that they would honor the paving uh, contract for this year, uh, as well as in, oh, close to $2,500 for 
repave the walkway. I mean, you, you, you could all look outside and see the condition of the parking lot. Next one. So I don't know how many of you walk around the building. If you go to the far side of the building where we store the equipment, this wall right here at some point was cut. This is supportive. Inside is just wood and this is wood. And you can see there's visible rot and damage to that. Inside it's really not much better. Yeah, I, no. I'd like to just, I'm not an engineer, but that is not yeah, it's what's scary. supposed to be carrying right. that it, kind it, of load. It's very scary. And and I remember when the guys came through, they said, well, maybe at the time when this was done, it might have been up to code, but it's not currently. So the other part of this, probably as a result of that being cut at some point, the wall's going out and water's getting in. And later on, we'll show you the pictures. So... Our concern is at some point, is there going to be catastrophic failure of this wall? The wall is going to crumble and everything that's inside and outside is just going to get crushed. I mean, it's just physics. There's nothing, you know, nothing to it. So that's not an adequate support for that particular wall. This is right here in the hallway. Yes, it's cosmetic, but you can see cracks pouring all the way up and we're going to see that as we, uh, um, move through. This is the staircase. Currently, these doors are locked. Um, again, more cracks. There's three images here. So this is the staircase and this is the rail at the top. And this is just another perspective. It's just showing the extent of the cracks. Yes, some of it is cosmetic, but I, I don't want to know what's behind these walls. I really don't. Um, this building should have lead paint in it, correct? Based on the year it was, yeah. right? So yeah. it's called painting over it and not making a lot of dust. Um, in order to be ADA compliance, we received a number of telephone estimates. We would have to hire an engineer, cost would be unknown with that, and roughly it would be about $300,000 to install an elevator or a lift device in order for this building to become ADA compliant so that individuals can go up to the second story because currently we yeah. have a historical room there. One thing to add to that, and that's just the access right. component of ADA to the second floor. The second floor itself also has ADA related problems. Right. And the fact that there's not like any sort of bathroom facilities up there also yeah. poses concerns. Yeah. So, go to the next slide. Next one. This is a portion of the ceiling upstairs. That's obvious. It's it's falling down. This was not. Uh, we were not given any estimates as far as this repair goes. All right. If we come around the corner upstairs, the flooring that is missing there was used to repair some flooring down here at some point. A number was given to us for repairing this small section. So the next one. And this is above the garage. So there's going to be a couple of these images here. When you're standing here, you could see light, sunlight coming through this crack between this is the exterior of the wall and this is the floor. This is about three days after it rained. Okay. So this one, you could see, um, I'm not even sure if this is paper. It's tar paper. Tar paper. It's tar okay. paper. It's tar paper. And, and the wall's cracking, and you can see it's, it's, it's got to be plaster and laid over the uh, brick. It's just all crumbling. Next one. And that's just a closer view for everyone's viewing pleasure. This is just a slightly different angle on that. This is mold. <laughs> and these cracks, when you're standing here, you can see from this is a closet wall, you can see from this room into that other room. So that Whole wall, and this portion of the wall is where the garage sits. Again, there's so much moisture behind this wall. You can see the bricks on the outside. Remember when we had the bees coming in and out last summer? It's just this is a nightmare. It, it's it's a problem waiting to happen sooner or later. I wouldn't even say that it's yeah. waiting to happen. It is yeah. a problem. It, it just hasn't problem. failed yeah. catastrophically yeah. yet. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad we're getting hit with this hurricane, but we're still not out of hurricane season. And this is just as I was coming down the back down the stairs, I'm like, oh yeah, here's another section of mold and mildew. Yeah. I don't even want to know what's behind those walls. The visible is disgusting, so yeah. the, the parts that we're not seeing. So prior to this, when we started getting information that we we're getting the ARPA funds, we thought, oh, let's renovate this room. So we got some early estimates about just renovating this room alone. So combine that with some of the other uh, necessities that we need for the building. Heating is a big issue. 
and it did not include AC at all, so we're just about heating. Mm. Um, the garage ceiling, trim and door replacements, uh, and it, 98,500 for windows alone in the building. The all single pane glass, God knows how old these things are, and the heating costs and cooling costs just keep on going up every year. So when I was looking at the meeting room updates, they're not all equivalent. So flat is, is really low, and mine is extremely low. Your rigs, our rigs, I found some credit. Um, was the most comprehensive and actually provided us with the request that we needed. Mm -hmm. And some of them are, some of those are making this room more Wi Fi capable, electrical, all this other stuff. So if we go to the next screen. I apologize. I'd like to talk fast. Yeah, you have to forgive me. So if you add up the numbers, it was $527,369. I said, you know, we're plugging a 5% overage. That's $553,737,000. This is for repairs. This is not technically renovation. The only room that would have any element of renovation would be this room. It still does not meet our needs. We don't have enough space for our vehicles, for all the equipment. Salt storage has been a problem in the past. So we're just looking at repairs of a building that is falling apart and we're not even sure it actually remedies the, the problems that we're having. A big problem that we have in this office is physical space. I moved out of this office into the AA room so that we can have an assistant secretary working here, but functionally it's still a very- It's disjointed. Yeah, it's a very disjointed space. And it's not because I have any tools that the township there's there's things that have to be done. There's records that have to be kept. Um, there's tasks that have to be completed, and you need a better space to accommodate that. You know, we need Wi-Fi capabilities. We need safety features. Things that just aren't here. We need to have it cool enough and warm enough. I mean, it's just you know, comfort. You know, just basic things. So when you look at that number, it's five hundred fifty-three thousand to repair not to renovate and so and that's right. that's just repair of the surface i have a feeling you're right if we start tearing oh, bits off the walls yeah. it's going to get right. we haven't even added the electrical mm -hmm. right. this this i'm concerned right. about upstairs right. there's going to be a fire up there with all those lights coming down right. and this, and this, yeah. this this is this is a dangerous so, situation yeah right. so uh, you know it, it's it's something to consider but you know i felt the need to to have this demonstration so that everyone understands what we see when we're going through the building. So we'll go ahead at some point and start getting estimates on a new building with things that are safe and things that will meet the township's needs along with trying to anticipate what the community needs down the road and have a little bit of that stuff later on too. Not that you really have something black oh. camera. Okay. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. Oh, okay. That comments. I, I think whoever that's that comments that's from that's, that's from yeah. before. That's okay. from the engineering. Oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. So I just wanted to make sure everyone understood what what we're seeing and, and what the issues are. And even getting those numbers were felt like pulling teeth for a while there. So we didn't probably change the Oh, I don't know. <laughs> we would be hiring. We'd be hiring people. That's the the estimate that we got. Yeah, professionals to do this. Yeah, we're good. There, but we got various all things. Those, all those people that I just went through on the slides. There's a whole lot of people on there. For example, the estimate yeah. for the windows was from Bachman's. They're like one of the only places that actually gave us they're an the estimate. Only first, they're the only yeah. company that keep you know pulled this up. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of companies out there, yeah. especially Terry. They don't want to talk to you. Mm -hmm. I know yeah. that in my and a lot of people come out to be an estimate $20,000 higher than you could be for the one job. Yep. You know, and really, honestly, to tell you the truth, you have an old building like this, the only way it's capable to maintain it is that you know how to do it yourself because it's it's just too much for someone to hire a contract to do. Looking at those pictures and, and working on my own for how long have I been? 12 now. I know for a fact that that's decades of the menu. Yes. Yeah. Decades 
Yeah. So yeah. 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 Oh, that we haven't even we haven't even yeah. entered into the equation. That's what that's what we're trying to illustrate is there is so much to be yeah. done with this building. Yeah. That is, uh, well, I have four, we've been, we've been I have four, yeah, we've been getting us thirty two years contractors. Yeah. No one wants two to come years. We're trying to get estimates, and nobody wants to come. I have, yeah, well, e easy example of this, and you're right. It's it's. I'm not gonna like throw stones or lay blame, but it's. Yeah. Oh yeah, it should have been a steel I-beam for sure. It, it is. It's a load bearing span, and it's like 24 feet. Oh, it's. Oh yeah, guaranteed. Guaranteed. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. Al, let me, Al, let me, let me just, just to bring right it to a fine yeah, point. Yeah. So, in summary, after reviewing this, we're going to proceed with looking at estimates as far as building a new building. We're going to put together a plan. And once we have other information, we now have a nice relationship with Hydroterra and we understand that there may be grants available to help facilitate this cost. So we will not commit to anything until we know a total cost and whether or not it is feasible. Yeah. So that's, that's what we're doing at this point in time. Optimistically between the ARPA money and some of the other grants that we know that are out there for like community development, uh, disaster recovery and response, emergency, things like that. We could potentially be looking at 90 to hundred percent paid in grants if we, if we, Play our cards right and it pans out. Yes. And another thing with this whole building, right? We touched the wall and the wall grip, right? Mm -hmm. It's framed out. Nope. It's not even. Yep. Okay, a lot more heat and more freezing. Oh, yeah. more AC more for sure. And yeah, I mean, to frame this out for insulation, I, I wouldn't want well, to. Well, not, not to mention, like, if you framed it out for insulation, because that's actually something I looked at was studying the walls out and putting the drop ceiling in to try to keep the heat in. <laughs> you lose a, it's it seems it seems like it's a big space but really when you try to cram 20 people in here it's not actually that big of a space and what i'd like to see us have is like what some other places have where you have a a large gathering hall where you can have like bingo nights or indoor events where you can rent it out for like a wedding or a birthday party or something something that brings the community right. in the in goal, ways that we can't do right now the community center yeah it, 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 the access and stuff. yeah it's not it's it's a lovely old building. It has a lot of uh, significance sentimental and sentimental value in, in the community, but it just doesn't fit for what we're for what we're trying to do with it. Yeah. So we're we authorized at the workshop meeting to start talking to real estate agents to see if we can find, uh, ideally, like we were talking before, like ten acres of land. Um, optimistically, again, on the south side of four twenty two, um, but to uh, to look at potentially uh, viable properties for that. Oh. Um, so that's, well, what we want to do is uh, we're not sure if chances are the school would probably give back um, the, the playgrounds to either the community association or the township, but the building would be then sold off. Um, so we'd probably keep that playground, but the goal here would be to also have recreational space with the new building. So we would have sufficient area for the building, for salt storage, for a garage, for the trucks and other equipment. Um, things like a soccer field or a, a baseball diamond, um, uh, actual like play sets, walking paths for people. The goal is to give us enough space that we can do all of those community related things that we want to do. I'm getting the last one. Every playground is there. Mm -hmm. Okay, every park. I've talked to several people and they kept their old things. Them, you mm -hmm. know, like we have these things and cars mm -hmm. and stuff like that. They bought these, right? They have all their own equipment. Mm -hmm. And then they have two small, different mm -hmm. accommodations. Uh, we ourselves are better off than some because we got the tennis courts, we got the baseball garments, mm -hmm. and we got 
It was a team sphere. Well, a lot of them, like, for instance, kind of the Facebook, our friends, they came in from a concert. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are all kinds of things the way at the end of the time, where we already got a lot of them in the Yeah, I understood. And so, what I'm uh, at Christian, there, uh, I talked to one of the secretaries over here. They were in the process of revenuating what little big space they have over there. Mm -hmm. And they didn't have a five year plan, like to you know, the pictures and everything. And uh, what they have like just right now is just one of the new little things. Uh, like a play set, yeah. Yeah. And um, a single block or something. And a bathroom, which now we can't do. Without a regular quarter party, you know, because they something with the piping, they're not something wasn't like done either, and so they're not even using that bathroom. They're using the quarter party. But I've seen your friends for five years, mm -hmm. and it, it, it's just amazing. And that's what you don't know, even you know, you know, you know, have to have here. So even if you go, of the facility. Mm -hmm. My question is, why do we need? Well, again, that's that's what we're. Yeah, that's what we're, we're. There's two. Yeah, there's. Well, that's and that's something we don't. Yeah, we don't. We don't have the space to do any of that stuff. So, like I said, it, it, we may not end up at ten acres. That's what we're going to start to look for. So that, under the assumption of, we may or may not be able to keep ownership or control over the park, or the MTCA may not get it. So we want to make sure that when we move, we still have the ability to have the tennis courts, have a ball diamond, have a playground. We don't want to lose that stuff by solving one problem with the building and creating more for ourselves. Well, we just made a motion. On yeah, it was, just, it was literally just on Saturday. It's still, it's still pretty fresh, but we're going to be looking because we want to keep it still in the heart of the community as much as we can. Um, yeah, and it, there's there's still a lot of variables that haven't been solidified yet. Like, there may be land that is usable, but it might be under some sort of easement, or the owner may not want to part with it or subdivide. So, I mean, there's there's still a ton of things to be done here, but we've kind of made the, the decision. The tipping point has been reached of, it doesn't make sense to try to, to renovate the building. It makes more no, sense. No, repair the building. Or, yeah, repair, repair. Thank you. Um, it doesn't make sense to repair the building. It makes more sense from a financial standpoint, especially when we yeah. can chase grants. It, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So and it makes us sit. It really does. Yeah. It's, it, it's again, it holds a lot of sentiment and yeah. a special place in the community, but the, the brass tax of it is it, it yeah. it's rapidly becoming um, not something that really fits with the purpose and the need. Yeah. All right. Next item. So, next item. The, uh, ball field, uh, multi-purpose court maintenance and lights. Uh, the MTCA, uh, would like to pay for and install LED solar lights. We, we said, go ahead. Yeah. Um, apparently the third base line is flooding and eroding. There's lots of weeds. Um, Butch and Don are going to be looking at, uh, what has to be done there to control the runoff on that side. Uh, might be something as simple as a swale or a mound of dirt, but, uh, they're going to assess that and let us know. Uh, yeah. Winds. Uh, continue, which I have the winds, people, uh, by way of doing stuff. Well, uh, Butch, it's you're you're the road master, so as long as your way of doing stuff will hold water with the board, well, you get you get yeah. the say in this, you have the authority. Uh, yeah, I know, but uh, you know, I was born all the Again, if you if you come to us and say I need to buy whatever amount of topsoil to, to create a swale, I think this is the best way to do it. People told me very very apt to put the swale. It's a it's a a rock and big. And uh, and uh, only... I, I suggested buying a, like a small load of topsoil mm -hmm. and making a nice uh, swale that, that uh, 
Yeah. We can bowl over. Yeah. And, and still hold the ball. Yeah. And uh, and then uh, they say, well, Warren, uh, Warren, won't the water wash that trail away? I said, no, you you find grass or grass away. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I was a farmer all my life. Yeah, that stuff works. Yeah, so tell us, tell us what needs to be done, and do it. We'll, we'll yeah, tell you to get it done. Hey, I mean, I'm staying in that base lot. Mm. Each state, hey, you stay so we wouldn't lose. I mean, we won't lose. We have to go do what we did this summer. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and uh, Johnny, Johnny, I, we've got a a line, and me and him. Not with that, I'll be on the motor purpose board. Okay. Let's see how much light I do. I, I made a, a thing to make light that's mm. the effect. Okay, good. That's what you were doing. Yeah, <laughs> I made a lot of good things. You're not. Like, oh, okay. So yeah, we weren't right. sure what you were doing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're making a lot of noise by your Kind of a extension to that. The next item is the insurance for the ice skating on the multi-purpose court. I know the MTCA did pick up a uh, rubber liner. Um, and they picked it up before they approved it. I know. Yeah. Um, uh, I thought they said they got it. Kelly, did they? Did you guys get that yet? Uh, okay. I I'm according to the workshop meeting. They did. Yeah, yeah, I'm almost yeah. positive they did. Oh, uh, okay. that. semantics it was it was purchased yeah. um so anyway um the insurance the change in the coverage would be about 250 dollars annually to support that the, the board is uh in agreement that that's an okay thing we're willing to, to back that we just need to fill out the form to complete the it's underwriting done. It was it's done. done okay fantastic yeah. um so that's already done um I mean, we can talk. Well, it's done. Yeah, I so say we already submitted the form. We can always. We can, I mean, it's not approved yeah. yet by the insurance company. So. Right. Yeah, we can always tell them to hold on it. But yeah. I mean, if, yeah. if nothing else, we, you you have our, our you piqued our interest. So if your liner doesn't work, we'll we'll help you figure out what the next step is to get that done. Yeah. And yeah, I, I hear you. <laughs> Fabric under it, something, something to cushion it a bit so that you don't. Uh, the floor itself mm -hmm. is Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thing. I used a little fork and said, Yeah. Um, pay him, pay him to, yeah. To put some landscape, you know, I will take the fork. Yeah. Yeah. You might actually just like pass this along to Don. If you're stacking gravel bags on top of that, it might not be a bad idea to put one under the liner and then another on top before you put the gravel bag on it because the gravel bags are almost always a little bit abrasive. Like they're always a little pointy. Oh, so. Canvas. Yeah, but I mean, you, it, it still probably wouldn't hurt to have something that is a, an extra layer no, of. Would, uh, yeah. Uh, you don't have to do okay, I, I tend to err a little on the over overkill side of things sometimes, but I'd hate to see you guys spend a bunch of money on a liner and then stack bags of rocks on it and then no, punch no, a hole in the it. Liner, so. liner and everything. Farmers use that to cover the polymers mm -hmm. and. Uh, when they're constant, they're constant. Okay. Okay, good. Good. <laughs> okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is billing for Stone Group, the, uh, the engineering and attorney fees. Um, we got a, a draft letter from Kozlov Stout, um, attorney McFarlane. Uh, actually put that together and we made a motion at the workshop meeting to approve the letter many thanks to colin so, for yes, that thank you that was perfect. Pass along, but thank yeah. you to colin yeah yeah I'll, yeah I'll pass that on that letter's out good i'll let you know i am crossing my fingers 
Yeah. How how much was it? Do you remember? Thirty one thousand. Thirty one thousand dollars worth of unrecovered fees so that we're going after. Between that and everything that we've recovered, we'll have recovered uh, over seventy thousand dollars of fees that were not previously billed for. So, yeah, big uh, big difference. Yeah. Well, Dan, Dan did a lot of the footwork and we compiled everything and, you know. Okay, Good fantastic. Job. Okay, a couple of housekeeping items. We have the PSATS Unemployment Compensation Group Trust 2022 ballot for elections of trustees. I'm actually going to lump a bunch of these together. Um, there's the PSATS Municipal Pension Trust 2022 ballot for the election of trustees and the PSATS Health Insurance Cooperative Trust 2022 ballot for election of trustees. Uh, we had one choice to vote for, which was Cheryl Barnhart. Uh, we motioned at the workshop meeting to uh, turn in our vote for Cheryl Barnhart for all three <laughs> positions. Um, <clears throat> next is the PA1 nomination for the board of directors. Um, this is another thing that we, we tabled until you were here, Irene, but okay. uh, this is another one where it's you, you vote, uh, but there's quite literally one choice for each position. Oh, I guess so. Um, yeah. So yeah, you get to be the deciding element on this. Um, so... I'll make a motion to return the PA uh, one nomination list, selecting the only choice for each category. Okay. Is that a second? Second. second. Roll call, Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jen. Hi. Okay. Moving right along. Next is the Topahawken Township Police Department uh, 2023 rate. As Irene mentioned, they will be increasing 5%. Um, Sue, did you fix the notes on this for the I totals, did. or am I going to mess that up? Yeah, okay. Um, so this is going from $54,246.96 to $56,959.31, uh, or $2,712 more for the year. Our monthly rate will be $4,746.61 during 2023. Can I insert a comment? You can. Okay. Absolutely, please do. So I'd like to invite the chief to one of our workshop meetings. Hopefully he can make it. It's my understanding there's a, a lot of issues that hadn't been addressed with the Tulpe police that have come to light and that they need assistance with. Okay. So um, just to talk out there, um, maybe we can work with the chief as well as the Tulpakin Township uh, jointly to help them find grants to help them get the supplies and equipment that they need. I'm all for you it. know, it, it, it's it's very important. It affects us greatly, um, and I want to show our support. I I think it would be unfair if we were to bear the burden, the financial burden ourselves, or if they were to bear it solely, and we would benefit by it. So. Um, I'll, I guess I'll reach out to Brian. John has a good relationship with him and, uh, we'll give him a call, invite him and get him on the agenda for one of our meetings. So this, so we, he can tell us what the issues are, yeah. um, and so that we could help remedy them and, uh, support them in any way that we possibly can. So, uh, that's just something that that's on my mind. So. Yeah, no, it's, yeah. it's a, it's a thing we pay for, but I, I very yeah. much view this as a, it's, oh, it's a partnership. They're yeah. part of our community. Oh, it, that, it's a thing uh, we pay for, but it's for our benefit, for our trust. Yeah. And we want to make sure that we're, we're yeah. keeping that well-maintained and uh, cared for. Yeah. What, what, you um, want to say something, John? Yeah. Just in the conversations I've had with the chief, at the minimum, they need that their um, body cams. There's, um, I know they're, they're working on getting a cruiser, but I have contact with one of the grant writers who got me the information out of a group like Harrisburg that specializes in police, police grant. Right. And so we bring up whether we just do what's called a Hawkin on the grant application or jointly. Right. We don't have a police force. Right. Depending on them. Right. Do we do it jointly as Tulsa Hawkin and Marion? Yep. And then status quite told the chief about it for a meeting. Yep. You tell us what you need and we'll help apply. Well, well, I'd like I'd like Brian to yeah, at the very I, least come to a workshop meeting because that's the easier meeting to have a bit more casual conversation, and then we could figure out what 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 his needs are and how we could best accommodate them and work with Tulsa. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So whatever we could do to show show our support and uh, make yeah. things better. Yeah, we want to yeah. make, we wanna make mean, sure that it's again, we, like I said, the relationship is well yeah. maintained and everybody's everybody's being benefited out of this. Yeah. 
I had the court of work the afternoon and so I found it up so I put them on while I was taking the photo of the lot and reaching over I mean four thirty and then almost six we did a street detail on four twenty two. We get a lot of people asking us about that. Yeah. And uh in that little over an hour, um uh, Kepler and I he wrote a case citation. <laughs> Yeah, people people speed <laughs> really badly on that section of 422. Wow. Um I'm just glad they're not doing that on Main Street as much. But uh on Main Street uh and I swear to God, before I'm even back in, everybody knows I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> but he's not even trying to look at his waiting Yeah. <laughs> the word travels fast. You're well liked. <laughs> okay, uh, we're down to the last couple of agenda items. Uh, next is the liquid fuels and turn back allocation. Uh, we received notification from uh, PennDOT. That our liquid fuels allocation for 2023 will be ninety six thousand nine hundred and ninety five dollars and eighty nine cents. Um, our turn back allocation for 2023 will be fifty two thousand three hundred and twenty dollars. Uh, the American Rescue Plan Act money, as we mentioned earlier in the meeting, has arrived. That was one hundred and one thousand one hundred and sixty seven dollars and sixty five cents, which was deposited into our account on the ninth. Um, it was two separate deposits, one of $100,848.79 and another of $318.86. Uh, final item on the agenda is the proposed budget. Um, this is something that we're going to be discussing at the October workshop meeting in earnest. The budget will then have to be finalized. We'll have to make a motion to accept it and advertise it and make it available for public inspection. And it must be advertised at least 20 days before the final budget is adopted no later than December 31st. Um, at this time, uh, we'll move into the comments section. Um, the police report, there's nothing really that jumps out at me as crazy. There were 13 citations issued last month, uh, five traffic, or excuse me, uh, eight traffic stops, five fire and EMS advisors, uh, advisories and 47 security checks. The mileage, so, I just um, feel so bad with yeah, the mileage. The, the mileage, uh, if you want to start reading that off, they yeah. patrolled 817 miles yeah. in Marion. Uh, bear in mind that Marion only has like 34 miles of road. Yeah. So that's quite a few circuits of the township. Yeah. Um, the engineer report, uh, we've already covered the majority of what's in there. Um, I don't feel the need to go over anything else because everything is there. Um, Irene, do you have any comments? Yeah, I do. Uh, for next month, hopefully I'm going to be able to put together the rental agreement. Okay. I've been working on that. So I know we talked about it and we'll uh, review that, send that in the email. Everyone, I have a little bit more to do. Um, John has an EMC report. Is he allowed to read that at the meeting? Yeah, he absolutely is. Yeah. John, do you want to read it? Do you want me to read it for you? Uh, yeah. Okay. And we we already got the, the radio things to correct the agreements, the okay. radio. Yeah. No, 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 John. John, 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 John you have to have the microphone. This yes, is you do. yeah. Oh, come on, you're used to this. Front center, yeah. my friend. Yeah. State, state your name <laughs> and your position, please. <laughs> yes, yes, you do. Right. John Celeste, emergency management coordinator. Um just a report because I haven't done too much on the reports, but I to say the least, I've been working on uh, a couple things. Just report that we have been, when I say we, it's me, I. Um, if you remember the uh, building explosion down at Reading Alloys, I was actually called down to that, to the command post to work with the uh, command. When, and Wait, when was that? August 3rd. Okay. Um, the uh, EMC down there called me down because he knows my hazardous materials uh, training. So I I was working with the identification response and uh, mitigation on the, uh, we got very lucky to say the least because there was four times the amount of material in the one building uh, compared to the Oklahoma City bombing. So it was really interesting. Um, and in talking with, to say the least, a lot of the area 
EMAs on different capabilities. One of the things within the EMA budget here, I would like to look at um, with requesting permission to use up to $1,500 of my budget to buy a drone for uh, post uh, post storm assessment, because there's been several times I've been going in between wires down, uh, just to say the least unsafe areas that we should not be putting a person into. And I have been going into them. Um, and I'm not looking for like the $35,000 drone that Western Burks has. Um, but aside from uh, the assessment on, and we could also be using it for infrastructure check here. We got culverts, anything like that that needs. Uh, we can also um, use it for like missing persons. like the, Well, that's the yeah, that was the next line yeah. was the search and rescue. So we've had two search and rescues in the township. Both times we've deployed drones. And both cases, it was almost an hour before the drones got on scene. And it was the drones that found it on the second time, uh, the gentleman in the cornfield. But um, I also, in speaking to Chief uh, Dronick, that he would definitely use that if they needed it for anything as far as law enforcement. Um, there's no thermal imaging capability or anything like that. And it'll, it'll only be daytime flying because I will not have an FAA license to fly at night. Um, so that's a request of up to fifteen hundred on that. They're in the thirteen to fourteen hundred dollar range, and I'm working with a couple of drone uh, fire chiefs that are also drone uh, uh, pilots, and they're basically I'm going with their recommendations. <clears throat> um, on that, that I would probably be the first, other than this radio, as far as a significant purchase. I'd also like to uh, look into purchasing. Uh, it'd be reflective decals for all our equipment. That'd be a property of Marion Township slash EMA, Berks County with our phone number and accountability number so we can start tracking equipment as we're buying it because we got to have accountability. There isn't now. Um, granted, I have a radio, so I think some road phones. That's it to our inventory, but we really, because there hasn't been done anything done in a very long time. Um, I'd also, and I know it has been brought up before. I know we talked about it, but I can get my, uh, my PPE that I need you know, between identification and, and uh, whatever, just as far as uh, compliant for OSHA, ANSI, and DOT. David, can, can you pause for just a second? Um, so with respect to the accountability, then purchases, anything, we'll start up uh, loose leaf, essentially, and a file so that any any items purchased, any record keeping, I'd have you come in here and work with me then so we could make sure we have something that is easily transferable to the next rounds of people. Yeah, and so on, yeah. aside from just purchased equipment, yeah. I have anything as far as donated, acquired, which I'm pretty good at. Um, but uh, just, I want accountability yeah. for everything. And, you know, so, not just for taxpayers' money, but I want to know where everything is. Right. Functionally, we need to set up what's called a CMDB. It's a configurable uh, asset management database. Yeah, John knows what, what what's up with that. That's a like a NIST Thank OSHA you. ITIL Thank thing. Thank you for doing that. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm not getting an extent. Yeah. We have the scanner. I can yeah, we don't we don't, stuff we don't have to zebra. Right. We don't have that much. Yeah, right. we don't have to zebra everything, but we should have we an inventory. Yeah. Uh, you, yeah. you can, but we're yeah. getting overly complex. We just Gosh, need to yeah. have a, a really. It can be as simple as a spreadsheet where we have what the item is, what the purchase okay. date was, what the amount, if it was capitalized or not, serial numbers. Um, honestly, he's right. You should sticker the bigger equipment or like engrave the bigger equipment. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's not... not an alter. Yeah. yeah, the decals up. We we've run into issues with uh, engraving equipment in the past. So you get rust. Fire sometimes. department, and there's certain equipment you can't engrave because you actually cause fractures in the yeah. material. So. I don't mind. I'm just I'm sticking sticker and yeah. it. Well, I just mean like, the, like road cones or something like that. If you're not worried about structural failure by, yeah. by yeah. cutting something in there, but um, but I'm working on getting a couple things donated also when it comes to emergency lighting and stuff like that. Scene lighting, not like red and red and blues. Hmm. Um, to work on the pump totes that I've mentioned before, um, which are the low clearance sump pumps, would be you know, rubber main container, which would be a sump pump. 100 foot GFCI uh, extension cord and at least be a 50, if not a hundred foot hose. Um, so when somebody does have flooding, like we had um, last year was significant flooding in a lot of basements and nobody's prepared for it. Mm -hmm. Some of the suggestions, and I'll put all that in writing once if the one we do it, um, probably like around the $400 range per, per box. Um, so during storm deployment, we can respond with it, drop it off, but to have a form from the township for that, to whoever is at the homeowner, that they're signing for it. And within three days, five days, whatever it is, if I can fill in on the paper, 
must be returned to us mm -hmm. and then we can clean it and what but then so, honestly something because of the cost if they sign for it and we don't get it back and we've tried etc and they're not giving it back we're sending them a bill for it yeah um because yeah. we're not losing equipment it's too expensive yeah we, we have to have some sort of agreement <laughs> in there and i would andy i would think some sort of waiver that we are not responsible for any yeah. damage that is caused as a result of flooding or the use of the the yeah, equipment right. um, yeah, yeah that yeah we'd have to have some paperwork not my fault. because yeah, yeah. My, not my fault form as we call them fire help. um and on that note on starting to get equipment and, and what um i'm looking into options i'd like to get a trailer um uh, 16 to 18 footer at least a tandem axle enclosed to haul the equipment around um just the storage of that equipment um, aside from different cones lighting pop-up tents, whatever we might need during a large incident, because it's not when, it's if, or it's not if, but when, we're going to, we're going to get it. Um, but I mean, not that we're going to see what Florida just saw, but, and we cannot depend on anybody else around us. I've talked to a lot of the EMAs and some of the other fire companies, because Womelsdorf really bailed us out um, with all their pumping, but they did. And um, I'm not worrying about a vehicle at this point, because I know my truck can, can pull it as well as I know the, the, road the road crew vehicle the uh, the bigger the, the small dump i guess they're both of them can easily pull it yeah um but to also have windows on two sides of it because not just for that transport on equipment and what it can also be used as a command center like when we had the search remember the trailer they had out here yeah. we can't see what's going on outside but it'd be nice to see what what is actually going on and then um Honestly, on scenes, and it's for something, once we get some coordination and start working a little better with the fire company, on fire incidents of some kind, especially whether it's hot or cold, we can respond with that trailer. We can set up a block or two away or half a mile, whatever it might be. And whoever the homeowners might be, we got some place for them to get into and get them out of the weather. Al, you left your jacket. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and the trailers, everything we're looking at right now is, on average, around right around twelve to fifteen thousand, um, and with some minor lettering of uh, you know Marion Township Emergency Management, we would be considered an emergency support unit under Berks County. Um, would there be any potentially any grants for that because it's well, your work specifically? Yeah, because you would have to look for grants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. I mean, there's nothing. Berks County is the worst county in the state I've, after speaking to many counties because. And I, I hope this is recorded then. Oh, it is. Because <laughs> Berks County, any money that comes for EMA, Berks hogs it all up. They don't distribute anything out. And with us being the smallest entity, we're not getting any of it. Yeah. Um, so whatever we can find, and trust yeah. me, it's, this is stuff that I'm working on. With EPD, if we're able to get someone for grant writing for just for that, it could be like a dual cost. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have put, but the last thing I had on this paper was um, I wanted to work with the fire company as far as assessment on their inventory of pumps, because the last significant flooding we had, they didn't have any pumps that could pump out the basements. Um, they had small trash pumps, what we call them trash pumps and mud pumps. They didn't have the capability. And that's why I had to call Wilmersdorf down. And they have a trailer, you know, with three three pumps in there. And was was there any was there ever any donation to Wilmersdorf Fire Company yes. for that? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Um, and then. Uh, that honestly to look to see what they're deficient in here that if we need to buy whether it's a township ema or what to buy them a larger pump the hose and everything they need and it's housed with the fire station um and then just to decide because i know mm -hmm. with the relief association does the township own it you know that if, if we transfer it to them which i'd rather do if we bought it transferred it to them then their relief association can then maintenance it we're not responsible for the you know the maintenance on it and oil changes and stuff like that and i had uh, that's all that's all on this one but then the last comment was um one of the fire chiefs i work with is looking getting me set up with dcnr uh department of conservation and national it's resources to try to get the possibility of a uh, high water vehicle because we have no capability to go rescue anybody if there's anything over on canal um not even the backhoe maybe the big loader and uh i want to see i want to see butch wearing his, his pfd and then things that everybody's got to have vests but on that if we're going if we are taking the uh, some of the stuff other things mm -hmm. that would be in the trailer is if we actually have to send him at the backhoe if you volunteer to go like we don't force you 
Um, but to take the loader or something in, anybody that we would be rescuing to put in that bucket has to have PFDs on, which we have none of that. And that's, again, that's real, relatively, that stuff's cheap. John, what's a PFD? A personal yeah. flotation device. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Yeah. Flotation device, so you know what I'm saying. other people that might not know. Sorry. Um, but the uh, the big thing on the vehicle, and that's where I want to know, is what, what we're responsible for, you know, are we responsible for the upkeep on the vehicle because it's owned by DCNR? Do we take it out there to get worked on? Are we responsible? You know, then is it financially feasible for us to get that vehicle? And then the biggest issue right now, we have no place to put it. So that's why yeah. I'm not pushing too hard for it. Yeah. But if DCNR says, hey, you can come pick up a five-ton army truck. We'll figure out something. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know. General, yes, sir. Uh, why, why would you want the electric drum on service? Have well, homeowners and what we know they're going to run because where we run into the issues is they run the gas pump inside their house. Yeah, yeah. And then they have. Yeah, to but my when you when you thought about that, my thinking is if if you have water in your basement, you don't want to run around into your basement. Well, yeah. Well, that's, well, that's, 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 that's the extension cord. With the FCI, we're going to look in off the first floor or exterior. And the thing is, they have enough power if they're out of luck. Yeah. Um, but it's on the gas pump side of things. All the fire companies I talk to, they have similar setups. Okay. Nobody, you know, I'm just saying because nobody's doing gas because they, they think it's a little it was a little dangerous to somebody that doesn't know. You and I are fine with it. Um, it's just, you know, somebody you walk up with the tote, okay, here's your gas pump. You know, here is we could, you know, where we help them at first, okay. First floor, plug in, drop the pump, follow us when it's done. Not to mention there's a lot of upkeep on, on gas stuff like that. And it's saying I can go to Lowe's Home Depot and buy any of the pumps that we need. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to want to follow up with Why? Because somebody has uh only fire and service and not yeah, it's everything's everything well, most small, like most of the sump I would say most of the sumps are 15, yeah. 15 amp or less. Yeah, unless you get into the big stuff, which I don't think is working. As far as I'm concerned, I'm not going to work on anything more than a foot of water mm. because the, the pumps that we have, because some of them were our neighbors during that flooding, we would have three pumps going and we still couldn't keep up with the water that was coming into the house. Yeah. It was backfilling. Yeah. And it's the thing, where, where we do the assessment, and again, I'm, I'm going to be working on a volunteer staff, shall we say, but I mean, obviously, I can't make every call. Um, but this is going to be the assessment, and there is training classes for this that everybody's going to be going to. Um, that was the other thing that I was going to give you the update is I'm, I'm right about 400 hours in between my basic and advanced certifications. I, I completed basic, and I'm, I have two classes short of my advanced uh, certification for all this stuff that I was volunteered to get into. But don't look at me. I'm not. I have nothing to do with you getting no, elected. But, or um, or whatever. So to say the least, trying to be a lot more proactive than what hasn't been done in the past. Mm -hmm. And it's not throwing anybody in the past under the bus. Just nobody nobody thought about it, I guess. Yeah. Um I want I would love to try to get a CERT program through FEMA, which is anybody in the community can be a part of that. You know, we have major storm damage, you know, by cell phones, we can get a hold of everybody. Okay, here's our meeting point. The baseball field or you know we pick a location everybody meet there here's your gloves here's your vest here your hat let's start cleaning up which um would fall under it's on with an emergency management but during the event the roadmaster uh has control of that group or he needs a certain group to go somewhere to start cleaning a roadway or sidewalks or whatever he gets to help direct them so i'm throwing out of that command box but <laughs> it's yeah, it's all part of the team Yep. So, okay. thank uh, you. I think that's it. Yeah, thank you for coming. So, just other than, I guess, let me know on any those other things that you know, if I can start getting some of that equipment. So, okay. Yeah, I think I don't know what the the drone, the reflective stickers, and the pump totes will be relatively easy to fit into the budget. I'll, yeah. I'll gear yeah. some of the stuff around that for the EMC budget. Um, the trailer is going to be a bigger, oh, yeah. bigger lift, and that's right. going to be we need to get grant funding yeah. for that. Yeah, pumps. We can put the pumps in the budget too. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like the pump, the he pump totes, the, the the dollar budget. Yeah, everything. Yeah. Yeah. Half the budget. That's all. Yeah. 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 Ye
Yeah. It was already budgeted last year. Yeah, it was budgeted. Yeah, and so we already we already have budget that he didn't yeah. consume from last year. Whatever you need. So there yeah. was five thousand that was used for the radio. So yeah. So, I mean if we budget the same amount next year, we'll have plenty. Yeah. 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 He needs you right away. <laughs> you've been, you've been volunteered. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh. How, much, how much can he spend without energy meeting? I mean, really, anything over uh, fifty bucks, you should get okay. from the board. Like okay. anything that's not petty cash. Yeah. Is... yeah. John, John, one more thing. You wanted a big map for the other room too. Yeah. Okay. So put it on. Open to two and get a trailer for the wall. Okay. Well, get get us prices, and then we'll put it on the agenda. Otherwise, we have to. Um, how big of a map are you talking? Probably about four by six, four by six, like a very just a, a map of the the community and the and outlying the areas. Rooms, the screens, the whatever. What do you want on the map? Not, I don't mean, it's not topographic. It's where, like, if I'm in, a, if I'm calling in the additional units, I'm like, I need to go to this intersection. Um, so you need roads. Yeah, roads. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah. Yeah. Does, it doesn't need to be color or anything, right? It doesn't have to be color. It's just laminated or at least something for protected. Yeah. But one of the things that's next to the deal, yeah. but if I have something that's mobile, there's no even that to work. It's making color though. You know. But look at the bigger the scale, the easier it's going to be on the right here. Yeah. 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 They, they should be able to print something that big with the plotter. That's yeah. why I asked about the black and white versus the color. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah. I'll just make sure this room is locked. Yeah, so we'll just lock everything else up. And, yeah. 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 Uh, Jim, anything else? MTC or otherwise? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. I think we covered everything else. Okay. Kelly, anything you want to? Uh, oh yeah, light refreshments. Don said, "I don't know what light refreshments means, but uh, okay. one, oh, good." One, one thing I will say from talking to Don is, bring bring a chair or a blanket. Yes. seating is not provided. Yeah, bring a so. chair, or bring a blanket, and is it going to be for multi-purpose? Yeah, yeah. all the purpose and people, and all my Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah okay uh andy any comments for you nothing additional no. okay thank you sue nothing okay in that case i will make a motion to adjourn the meeting the time is now 9 20 p.m oh, there a second second Motion, peter aye irene aye jim aye okay meeting getting adjourned thank you everyone stay safe